All right, so I want to take a second and kind of cover the uh, concepts of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Uh, I think it's one of the harder questions uh, or topics to cover in this unit, so I wanted to spend a little extra time and put this video together for it. So let's take it piece by piece. So heat exhaustion, okay, remember heat exhaustion is usually the feeling of being lightheaded or dizzy, uh, sometimes cramping is thrown in there, uh, but certainly like a, a mental alertness it has dropped. Um, and the main reason for that is a drop in blood pressure. Okay, so dizzy, confused, lightheaded. Um, often you have muscle fatigue or cramping along with it. And the primary um, uh, problem is low blood pressure, so there's not enough blood being pumped up to the brain. Right? Now, remember, this is important. It's a nice and important definition for us, guys. Very important definition for us. But what I'm really interested in is the root cause of why. So remember that the low blood pressure, okay, so not enough low blood pressure, so not enough uh, blood reaching the brain, um, is actually due to um, the process of cooling off. So this guy over here is hot, okay. So essential thermoreceptors have detected that, and he's done two things to stay cool. He is sweating, and remember when we sweat the water for sweat actually comes out of the bloodstream. So it actually decreases, if it goes on long enough, decreases your total blood volume, which contributes to the low blood pressure, right? So this will help cause the low blood pressure, right? And the second thing was the vasodilation. And remember, vasodilation, what we're talking about that, it's the blood vessels are opened up in order to let more heat out of the body, right? Um, but at the same time, when you open the blood vessels, that drops blood pressure. So those two things, the sweating and the vasodilation, are what actually cause the low blood pressure. And even though they're keeping his body cool, if it goes on long enough, causes the dizziness, the confusion, all of these other things. Okay, None of those things are as bad as... Um, as actually overheating and dying, all right? So that's the body's choice, all right? Um, in order to treat a person with heat exhaustion, really all you gotta do is try and fix those problems. You wanna rehydrate, you wanna give the person some more water to replace all the water they've sweat out, um, so that should fix this end of it. You wanna give them some salts to help um, uh, replace all the electrolytes that they've sweat out. Um, but the biggest thing is just get a person to sit down and cool down, because as soon as they sit down and cool down, the vasodilation will stop. And if you stop this, okay, if everything goes back to normal, okay, then your blood pressure goes back up, okay? So it'll increase our blood pressure again. If you can get the vasodilation to stop, okay, so if you can get that to stop, okay, then the blood pressure will go back up and uh, the person will feel much, much better, okay? Okay, so now heat, extra, uh, heat stroke is when you've gone past heat exhaustion, when the body's gone past heat exhaustion, and essentially the body has chosen to fix the blood pressure problem, um, and, and by doing so it actually stops, has to stop regulating temperature, okay? So the two ways they can fix the blood, uh, the blood pressure problem are to vasoconstrict, and remember, vasoconstriction is closing of the blood vessels, and that will actually help raise the blood pressure, so that in, ends up uh, raising the blood pressure. And the end result is, if blood pressure goes back up, we send more blood to the brain. So the brain is happier. Okay? Um, but as you know, vasoconstriction is usually used to insulate the body and to hold in heat, and that's exactly what it does. Okay? So we vasoconstrict, but it's going to hold in heat, so... Um, even though it fixes the blood pressure problem, we get more blood to the brain, then down, the side effect is that it also raises our temperature. The second thing that happens is we will stop sweating. And again, the stopping sweating is really just another way of helping make sure the blood pressure stays where we want it to be. If we were to sweat more, then the blood pressure would drop again. Remember, the water comes from the blood pressure. So by stopping sweating, um, we're going to maintain our blood pressure. Okay. So essentially, heat stroke is a last-ditch effort by your body to get enough blood to the brain. It's a really bad plan because it's going to hold in the heat and without sweat, we're not going to, if we don't have any sweat, we're not going to evaporate the heat off the body, and we're not going to get rid of all that. Um, so heat stroke is kind of your last-ditch effort. Your body has gone past heat exhaustion. Your brain isn't getting enough blood, so it chooses to vasoconstrict and stop sweating to fix the blood pressure, and we get enough blood to the brain. But if it goes on long enough, the person will overheat.
Okay, so heat stroke is a much greater medical emergency. You can't just let a person lay down because they're vasoconstricted. No heat's leaving their body. They're not sweating, so they're not getting rid of heat. So you actually have to cool their body. So the picture on the diagram over here on the right shows you a couple things. If you elevate the, the feet, okay, that'll help more blood get to the brain. You won't need to vasoconstrict quite so much. So that might let out some of the heat. Um, you want to give fluids if you can. If the person's conscious, then you can give them fluid. Um, but this is the key you want to try and lower the person's temperature. So this shows like applying cold compresses right here um, or using a fan um, to cool the body off. Uh, if you had ice, putting some ice on the person to cool them down. But anything you can do to lower the temperature because once it gets high enough, remember what can be fatal about heat stroke is the fact that if you get too hot, the enzymes fall apart. And if we lose the enzymes, then all the chemical reactions in the body stop and the person is going to die. All right. So one more slide I want to take a peek at here. So here's your big differences, guys. So heat exhaustion, okay, what you see when a person has been exercising or uh, running around a lot, okay, they're going to have moist, clammy skin because they're sweating a lot. Uh, pupils tend to be a little bit dilated from the, um, the adrenaline, all the stuff that's going on there. Um, and you're going to be usually someplace around normal temperature, guys, around normal temperature, because you're, you're keeping yourself cool. Even though it says heat exhaustion, you're maintaining your temperature through sweating and vasodilation. All right? Over on this side, on the right-hand side, we're looking at heat stroke. And in heat stroke, you have a dry, hot skin. Okay, um, and, the, and the skin's going to be hot because the person's usually going to be above their normal body temperature. There might be 100, 200, 300, 400, 5. Um, there are cases where people are 108 degrees when they uh, when they drop down from uh, heat stroke. Okay, um, the very high body temperature comes from the fact that you've vas vasoconstricted and you're not sweating anymore. So the body temperature tends to go up and up and up and up and up and that is the big 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 problem with us okay so heat exhaustion something that most of us have experienced at some point if you've ever been exercising out in the heat you've probably had some of that um, I knew it happened all the time in, in football um, with our double sessions in the summer um, hopefully uh, if you get those symptoms, you'll sit down, rest, rehydrate, relax, instead of pushing it, because if you keep pushing it, then you can switch over into heat stroke, where your body stops holding or regulating body temperature, and you end up um, with, uh, with your, you stop sweating, and you stop regulating body temperature, and your temperature keeps going up and up and up. Hope that helps.